I'm Michael Kudica. I'm Associate Professor of Medicine in the Division of Pulmonary and Critical Care Medicine at Northwestern Medicine. As a pulmonologist, my major role in the CTEF program um, is to handle the screening of patients as they come in. They are generally referred to the hospital for the evaluation of pulmonary hypertension. Or we also have an active program where we identify patients with acute blood clots in the lung and then follow them serially in our clot clinic and in my clinic to look for long-term complications from PE. CTEF or chronic thromboembolic pulmonary hypertension is a type of pulmonary hypertension or high blood pressure inside the lung. You know, in many patients, this starts off as an acute pulmonary embolism, and then for some re reason in that patient, they don't uh, lyse the clot, they don't dissolve the clot, and over time, that clot turns into like scar tissue in the blood vessel in the lung. And that scar tissue then obstructs blood flow through the lung and leads to elevated pressure that puts a strain on the right side of the heart. As that pressure rises, patients become more short of breath. They can actually develop right-sided heart failure, um, and then that's usually when they end up being referred in for evaluation and management. In regards to CTEF specifically, the key test is usually the ventilation perfusion scan, that and the CT angiogram, where we're actually looking at the pulmonary vasculature and deciding whether or not there is a chronic clot that's causing a perfusion abnormality into a section of the lung. Usually the final test will be a right heart cath with a pulmonary angiogram so that we can actually measure the pressure in the lung, the, the flow of blood through the lung, decide whether or not that clot is actually causing a resistance to blood flow, and then through the pulmonary angiogram take a much more detailed picture of the pulmonary vasculature. Then once a patient is given the diagnosis of CTEF, there are basically three treatment pathways. Pathway one would be the medical management, using pulmonary vasodilators or drugs that are going to dilate the pulmonary vasculature. The second treatment pathway would be through a procedure called a balloon pulmonary angioplasty, where our cardiology colleague colleagues go in and use balloons to angioplasty or push the chronic clot out of the way. That's usually multiple procedures over the span of months. And then the gold standard for treatment of this disease is really the pulmonary thromboendarterectomy surgery. So this is a surgery where our surgeon goes in and surgically extracts the chronic clot from the pulmonary vasculature. Uh, and we offer all three of those treatment pathways at Northwestern to sort of optimize the outcomes of our patients with CTEF. Hello, my name is Dan Schimmel, and I'm an interventional cardiologist at Northwestern Medicine. I work in the diagnosis and also the treatment doing balloon pulmonary angioplasty in our patients who are not surgical candidates. A balloon pulmonary angioplasty is a procedure that's built on angioplasty done for the coronary arteries, except for we move through the venous system, often using femoral access, but sometimes internal jugular access, to go into the pulmonary arteries and inflate a balloon at low pressures in order to dilate the artery and push old thrombotic debris to the side. Patients who come to the interventional program and undergo balloon pulmonary angioplasty will undergo four to eight sessions, getting treatments to the small vessels in the periphery of the lung arteries. Once that's completed, um, they'll follow up in about three months to get pulmonary pressures repeated, get six-minute walk tests, and see how they're doing clinically. We're seeing improvements in six-minute walk tests. We're seeing improved feelings in breathing and exercise capacity. We see decreases in pulmonary vascular resistance and increase in cardiac output. With balloon pulmonary angioplasty, we can't expect to see the decrease in pulmonary pressures that we do with pulmonary thromboendarterectomy, but we still help patients lead a better quality of life. Within our CTEP program, we found a number of patients that might benefit from balloon pulmonary angioplasty. Some of those are patients who have had recent pulmonary embolisms and have not yet developed pulmonary hypertension. For other patients, who have significant pulmonary hypertension with chronic thromboembolic disease, they may not be good surgical candidates, and those may be patients who will benefit from balloon pulmonary angioplasty. For patients who have recurrent chronic thromboembolic pulmonary hypertension, those who have already undergone pulmonary thromboendarterectomy, a repeat surgery can be highly morbid. For those patients, balloon pulmonary angioplasty is a good therapy to offer to get them back the quality of life they're missing. Hi, I'm Chris Malasri. I'm professor of surgery at Northwestern University and cardiac surgeon at Northwestern Medicine. As a cardiac surgeon in the CTEF program in Northwestern Medicine, I'm responsible for participating in patient selection for therapies, including both pulmonary thromboendarterectomy and balloon pulmonary angioplasty. I'm the primary cardiac surgeon who performs this highly specialized operation to remove clots that are lodged in the pulmonary arteries for patients with CTEF. 
The pulmonary thromboendoarterectomy operation is open heart surgery and requires a sternotomy, which is an incision that is similar to what patients get for coronary bypass grafting, and also the heart lung machine. Furthermore, there is a brief period of cold circulatory arrest during which time we remove the chronic clot that is lodged inside the pulmonary arteries. During this period of time, we cool the patient down to room temperature and the cardiopulmonary bypass machine is suspended. This allows us to remove the clot with minimal risk of injury with perfect visualization. All CTEF patients are considered for pulmonary thromboendoarterectomy first, and approximately two-thirds of patients will be anatomic candidates depending on where the clot exists in the pulmonary artery. The more proximal the disease, the better surgical candidates they are. Patients after surgery are followed very closely in our post-operative CTEF clinic. The single most important aspect of post-operative care is continuation of the long-term anticoagulation. The vast majority of our patients have an improvement in symptoms with measurable decrease in pulmonary artery pressures. In addition, we re-image the pulmonary arteries in order to determine the presence of any residual clot, which may be amenable to interventions such as balloon pulmonary angioplasty. We have found that surgery for CTEF to be safe. All of our patients have been discharged with a noticeable and sometimes dramatic improvement in symptoms. All of our patients had a reduction in pulmonary artery pressures, and about half of our patients have mean pulmonary artery pressures less than 25 millimeters of mercury, which constitutes a cure. At one year, we've been impressed to find a lot of our patients to be back to a normal and active lifestyle with no symptoms at all. Northwestern Medicine is special in our program because the surgeon, the pulmonologist, and the interventional cardiologist happen to all be interested in this program at the same time. At some institutions, you may find that a surgeon is managing the program. At other institutions, you may find that an interventional cardiologist is working on their own. At ours, the three of us are meeting weekly to discuss patients, discussing what might be the best therapy, and give them the best possible outcome.